the candidate who wished to become a silent unseen had to graduate a number of grueling courses. The main ones were diversion, demolitions, marksmanship and physical training. The last one was accompanied by an intensive hand-to-hand -hand combat course, which could be extended to encompass knife fighting. The candidate needed to acquire a high degree of proficiency in these skills, which were necessary for diversionary action. The focus was on teaching the soldiers a set of simple, effective techniques for offensive and defensive purposes during special operations. The course, which was officially called Close Combat, was dubbed by the candidates as Instructors, at least those I knew. There were two of them. They were huge, huge men. To whom I could not stand up to physically, not at all. There was one I remember. He was built like a bull. He did train hand-to-hand -hand combat. So, you know, when he grabbed me, I certainly did see some stars. Such were these gentlemen. <laughs> the system of hand-to-hand -hand combat taught in the SOE training centers was simple, brutal and effective. The instructors worked under the assumption that attack is always quicker than the defense. Thus it was the offensive skills that were given priority in training. The future commandos were taught techniques forbidden in sport. They were shown vital points of the opponent's body that were most susceptible to an attack. Training methods were meant to develop a tenacious fighting spirit. The goal was to react quickly and eliminate the threat. The bodies of the silent unseen were being turned into weapons. The combat system used in training was developed by Fairbarn and Sykes. Their students, mainly policemen from the colonies, were transferred to England for the particular purpose of teaching the art of silent killing. Physical training and hand-to-hand -hand combat, different blocks, ways to incapacitate or kill. Dad told me that they were learning jujitsu. He demonstrated some locks, throws, breakfalls. He was good at it. Even when he tripped, one could see how proficient he was. He demonstrated various techniques he was taught. A different technique to incapacitate and a different one to kill. According to the objectives of the Fairbarn psych system, simple elements were taught first and then developed into combinations and more complex movements. Techniques were selected on the basis of their effectiveness, ability to attack from every angle, and the time needed to acquire proficiency. Theory was limited to absolute minimum, focusing on practice. Initially, the candidates were taught knife hand strikes, targeting opponents' vital areas. Subsequently, they were taught palm strikes, knee strikes, low kicks and stomps, along with boxing techniques, choke holds, joint locks and takedowns. A silent unseen was supposed to strike quickly and aggressively to gain an upper hand, even against a larger and heavier opponent. These are the daggers, the ones we use for stabbing, like this. Or otherwise, it might not penetrate. There could be clothes, a coat, anything else. They even cut through the scabbards. We were shown, we were shown, yes, not with the sharp ones, but with blunt ones. We had to draw the knife and strike. We struck, but not with the sharp ones, that was impossible. But when the blade was dull, then you could have sparred with it, fight with it. Dad told me that knife fighting was taught by an actual knifer, a street cutthroat, a typical thug. Typowy majher. 
He told me what this knife fighting was all about. It was about cutting the opponent and making the enemy bleed out. Not about looking for a final blow, but dealing a lot of cuts. That's what this bandit had taught him. The one who was hired to serve in the army and to train the silent unseen. Fairbarn and Sykes, the fathers of the military combat system, went as far as to develop a special kind of dagger, designed especially for close quarters fighting. It was used by SOE agents, the silent unseen, and commandos throughout the course of World War II. Both the experts had a lot of respect for the blade. They believed that the only fully effective way to defend against a knife attack was to use a firearm. The course is often stressed that engaging a knife-wielding opponent should be avoided. The soldier was supposed to evade and retreat. If this was impossible, the Silent Unseen could make use of the hand-to-hand -hand self defense techniques, but even then he was strongly advised to utilize an improvised weapon. In the Fairbarn Sykes combat system, the dagger was mainly an offensive weapon, giving the wielder a huge advantage, both physical and psychological, over an unprepared, surprised opponent. For training purposes, short fragments of rope were used instead of actual blades. Wooden training knives were deemed too dangerous, causing unnecessary injuries, and rubber ones were very rare, as majority of the rubber available was otherwise used by the war industry. The next stage of silent killing was acquiring the ability to disarm an opponent carrying a rifle or a sidearm. Disarming techniques were simple and effective. The main rule was to drill the chosen technique to perfection and utilize the element of surprise. Silent Unseen were taught to get out of the immediate line of fire, intercept the weapon and incapacitate the enemy. Disarming techniques were supposed to prepare the candidates for unexpected scenarios, such as an arrest. As it turned out later, those were the skills that were going to save their lives numerous times. Another stage of silent killing were the open terrain operations. British command had an interesting approach towards the simulated combat. Using hand-to-hand -hand techniques was allowed, including even the most painful moves. However, the use of heavy objects and live ammunition was prohibited. There were strict rules against causing wounds or fracturing bones. It was an attempt to simulate the battlefield in as safe as possible manner. Different scenarios were carried out, including assault and ambush operations. The training, apart from the fighting skills, imbued the candidates with a high self-confidence and the conviction that they could tackle even the most difficult tasks. My dad knew what to do with folks. There was this one time where he knew that they wanted to beat him up, that they were ready. So there was only one way to beat them up first. He started with the closest one, and the rest got them. Well, they scattered. The exceptional proficiency in hand-to-hand -hand combat has proven itself useful multiple times, both in the battlefield and in private life after the war. The Silent Unseen have acquired skills, endurance and indefatigable resolve, which reinforced by the experiences of combat allowed them to handle life at its worst, overcoming even the most difficult of situations. Courage, awareness and fast reflexes were the fruits of a difficult training regime which was supposed to prepare them to face the harsh reality of the occupied homeland.